Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to study the middle part of Norma Bessalis. Yes, in the previous video or previous lecture, we have studied the anterior part of Norma Bessalis. And in today's video, we are going to study both the median part as well as the lateral part of Norma Bessalis. So welcome once again. Let's start our lecture. As we discussed, the middle part of Norma Bessalis will be divided into median area and the lateral area. So, in median area, what are the structures which we can see? First is the posterior border of the Voma bone and the second is a broad bar made up of the body of sphenoid as well as occipital bone. Let me show you here. Median area of middle part and the lateral area of middle part. Median area consists of Voma. Second, we have some canal known as Palatino Vaginal Canal and Vomero Vaginal Canal. We will see the diagram and the picture and animation here. And last, the pharyngeal tubercle. Okay, these are the structures which can be seen in the median area of the middle part of Norma Vesalis. There are some, uh, the two bones which we can see in the lateral area of middle part. Those two bones are sphenoid bone and a temporal bone. And of sphenoid bone, we see two structures. First is the pterygoid process and the second is the greater wing of sphenoid. Yes, and the inferior surface we can see in the lateral area of middle part. Now, what are the structures of temporal bone we can see in this view? The structures of the temporal bone are petrous part of temporal bone, tympanic part of temporal bone and squamous part of temporal bone. These are the structures of the temporal bone which can be seen in the lateral area of middle part. Yes, we cannot see the mastoid part because it comes into posterior part, not in the middle part of the Norma basalis. Fine. First, we will study the median area. Here, you can see the Norma frontalis and we will see how in the median area of Norma basalis, Voma is located. See here. Let me remove the non-essential part so that we can understand the exact location of the Voma bone, how it is placed. Can you see the Voma bone? It is articulating with the palatine bone inferiorly and superiorly it is attached to the sphenoid bone. And which part of the sphenoid bone? The rostrum of sphenoid bone, body of sphenoid. Let me remove this mandible also. Yeah. So that... Now, in order to study the Norma Basalis, we have to turn this structure upside down so that this structure can be clearly understood by you. You can see this part, how the vomer is attached to the palatine bone. Can you see here? The vomer, vomer is divided into two ella superiorly and articulates with the rostrum of sphenoid. This is the rostrum of sphenoid. This is the part of the occipital bone, basi occipute or basilary part or the basal part of the occipital bone. And this whole structure forms the pharyngeal tubercle. Now let me show you. This is the posterior border of the vomer. And this is the pharyngeal tubercle. Vomer and pharyngeal tubercle. Now, how the palatino vaginal canal and vomero vaginal canal are formed and where they are located, let me show you. So, let me enlarge this part and show you the palatino vaginal canal and vomero vaginal canal. We cannot see the vaginal process of the medial pterygoid, but yes, we can draw it so that we can imagine where the process is present and how the canals are formed. Let me show you. Here, this is the Voma bone. You can see both the ella of Voma bone. And this is the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. And this is the vaginal process. Can you see the vaginal process of the medial pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone? Yes. And this is the vaginal process of the sphenoid bone. And this is the palatine bone. Can you see the triangular structure? This, how they fits 
to the pterygoid process. And this is the palatine bone. With green, I have drawn the palatine bone. And here, superiorly, you can see this is the vomero vaginal canal. Why superiorly? Because the structure, the skull has been turned upside down. So, superior canal is the vomero vaginal canal, and the inferior canal is the palatino vaginal canal. Can you appreciate both the structures? Yes. And what this palatino vaginal forms the communication between two structures. These are communication of pterygoid fossa to nasopharynx. Where is the nasopharynx? This is the nasopharynx area. And pterygoid fossa and nasopharynx is communicated by which canal? Palatino vaginal canal. Let me show you this structure in another diagram. Here we have another diagram. You can see the sphenoid bone. Yes. You can see this, the pterygoid process of sphenoid bone. Yes. Here you can see the vaginal process of the sphenoid bone. Yes. And again, the which part? The sphenoid process of the palatine bone also present here. So, inferiorly, which structure is present? Palatino vaginal canal. And superiorly, which structure is present? Vomero vaginal canal. Okay. Now, these were the structures which we have to study in the median area of middle part of the norma basalis. Now, we will study the lateral area. We have covered all the structures of the median area. First, the vomer, pharyngeal tubercle and the palatino and vomero vaginal canal. Now let's have the look of the lateral area of middle part of norma basalis. What are the bones which we study here are the sphenoid bone and which part of the sphenoid bone? Pterygoid process both medial and lateral as well as the greater wing of the sphenoid and which part and the temporal bone. We will study each bone one by one the sphenoid bone and the temporal bone. First, we will study the sphenoid bone. Let me show you the sphenoid bone, how it is placed in this view. So, beautifully it is placed here. See the outline of the sphenoid bone, which you can appreciate here. And the same which you have to do in your lab. In anatomy lab, you have to take the skull and mark the sphenoid bone. This is the inferior view of the sphenoid bone. Which bone? Sphenoid bone. Now, I will show you different area of the sphenoid bone or different parts of the sphenoid bone. Let me show you. Now, I will outline the wing of and we can see in the inferior view, we can only see the greater wing. We cannot see the lesser wing. Lesser wing can be seen only in the which part? When we remove the roof of the skull in the base of the roof of the skull we will study about that in the later later lecture later classes but here you can see the greater wing of sphenoid which has been outlined with the blue and with red which part has been outlined this is the inferior view of greater wing of sphenoid and in red the pterygoid process has been outlined this is the pterygoid process Okay, what is this? This is the pterygoid process. Okay. Now, I will take out this sphenoid bone and mark the parts of pterygoid process. We will study first the pterygoid process and then we will study the inferior view of the greater wing of sphenoid. Let me show you the sphenoid bone. This is the sphenoid bone. Anterior view of the sphenoid bone. Here, both the Canal, you can see the aperture, which is, you can see this is the aperture which is present in the, which part? Where will it take place? Where uh, it will take you? It will take inside the sphenoid sinus and you can see the lesser wing. You cannot see this lesser wing in the inferior view or the norma basalis. You can see only this part and this part in the norma basalis. Let me mark different structure. I have turned the upside down the sphenoid bone so that I can show you different parts of the 
pterygoid process. First, we will discuss the pterygoid process. First, let me mark the medial pterygoid process. This is the outline of the medial pterygoid process. Let me color the surface of the medial surface of the medial pterygoid process here. And you can see the posterior border has been divided into two parts. Of which bone? Of the medial pterygoid process. The posterior border of medial pterygoid process has been divided into two parts. Let me show you this two parts. And the structure which is present between both the border is known as this fossa has been formed here. This fossa is known as scaphoid fossa. How has it been formed? It has been formed by the division of posterior border of medial pterygoid plate. Let me show you. This is the posterior border on the upper end which is divided to form a fossa called scaphoid fossa. Let me color that fossa with yellow. Can you see, appreciate both the scaphoid fossa on both the side, left and right? Yes. Now, we have some more structures here. This is the hemulus. This hemulus or hook-like structure is known as pterygoid hemulus, which is marked in purple, which is marked in purple. Can you see the lower end of posterior border forms the pterygoid hemulus? This is the lower because you know, the sphenoid bone has also been turned upside down to study the norma basalis. Okay. So, here we discuss the medial pterygoid plate. Let's discuss the lateral pterygoid plate. Uh, this is the medial surface of the medial pterygoid plate. Let me discuss the lateral surface, lateral pterygoid plate. Okay. Here in this view, we can see the lateral pterygoid plate clearly. Can you see the marking here? This is the lateral pterygoid plate and here we can see the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. It has two surfaces, medial surface and the lateral surface. So, here we are, we are seeing the lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate. This is the lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate which forms the medial wall of which part? Here, pterygoid fossa is present. Here, which is present? Sorry, not pterygoid. Temporal fossa is present. And the area present below the temporal fossa is known as infratemporal fossa. Infratemporal fossa. And the median wall of the infratemporal fossa is formed by which bone? Which part of the bone? Lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate. Okay? Now, we have some structure, some processes. This is the small projection which is seen on the posterior border known as pterygospinous process. Can you see the pterygospinous process? Yes, we will study about the structures attached to these processes like hemulus, pterygospinous process and all the structures in separate video. Here, we are just studying the bony landmarks. Fine. Can you see how these process Pterygoid process are directed, pterygoid process plates are directed backward and laterally. Both pterygoid process, it's, I'm not talking just about the lateral, I'm talking about both the pterygoid plates, either it is lateral pterygoid plate or medial pterygoid plate, both the plates are directed backward and laterally. You can see clearly in the diagram, fine. This is the lateral pterygoid process. See, we have discussed the medial pterygoid process, lateral pterygoid process, but how is it attached to the other part of the bone? Anteriorly, which bone is present here? Anteriorly, it is attached to the palate. Palatine bone, not palate, the palatine bone. Let me show you. This is the, can you see the green Part, the green marking, this is the palatine bone. And you can see how the pterygoid plate has been articulated with the palatine bone. Let me show you more clearly. Can you see the anterior border? Let me show you the anterior border. This is the anterior border of the pterygoid plate. Okay. 
and here we have the palatine bone let me shade it with red color this is the palatine bone and see how it is articulated with the palatine bone and it is not articulated with the maxilla there is a space between maxilla and the pterygoid plate see and that space is pterygo maxillary fissure okay let me show you there is the this is the anterior border of both plates articulating with the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone let me show you here just take the screenshot and here the space is present please see here the space is present this is the maxilla and there is a space present can you see the laterally the plates are separated from maxilla and that separation is called pterygo maxillary fissure which plates pterygoid plates there is a space here and that fissure which the space or fissure which is formed is known as pterygo maxillary fissure you can take the screenshot now we have discussed the medial pterygoid plate and lateral pterygoid plate now we will discuss the greater wing of sphenoid the greater wing of sphenoid when you look from the inferior view you will get a pentagonal shape yes let me show you let me remove this part this is the maxilla i will remove this part so that we can see clearly the greater wing of sphenoid and mark each and every part properly see here i have removed the tooth and the maxilla can you appreciate this part this part only this part can be seen from the inferior view that is from the norma basalis only this part and this is pentagon in shape 1 2 3 4 and 5 five sides let me mark in diagram also this is the five side this is the anterior border anterior margin a which bone greater wing of sphenoid this is the anterolateral margin okay can you appreciate it clearly this is the anterior margin okay which is forming which part the inferior orbital fissure the posterior border of inferior orbital fissure orbital fissure is formed by uh, inferior orbital fissure is formed by which two bones the sphenoid bone and anteriorly maxilla is present so there is a space between the sphenoid bone and the maxilla and so inferior orbital fissure is formed due to that space fissure means space okay let me show you this part and here you can see the posterior lateral border with green and this is the posterior lateral border or margin and then you have this posterior medial margin why because it is towards the midline okay now here this is the entero medial margin so can you appreciate all the five sides of the greater wing of sphenoid which can be seen from the norma basalis now the structures these margins have different names and different structures can you see small spine like structure this small spine like structure is known as spine of sphenoid and the spine of sphenoid is formed by two margin posterior lateral margin and posterior medial margin it is formed by two uh, two margins posterior lateral and posterior medial margin okay now this anterior margin can you see the anterior margin this anterior margin what is anterior margin anterior margin forms the posterior border of inferior orbital fissure i have explained just now okay so each and every margin forms di different different parts now second i will talk about the anterior lateral margin can you see the anterior lateral margin yes it forms the infratemporal crest why it is called the infratemporal crest 
here you can see the temporal fossa and here can you appreciate the crest part yes that is the reason it is known as infratemporal crest and it is formed by anterolateral margin see here this is the anterolateral margin which is forming the crest part and the third point posterolateral margin it articulates with the squamous temporal bone here this is the squamous temporal bone here this is the squamous part of the temporal bone temporal bone has different part petrous part squamous part we will go in, we will study about them also so this margin articulates with the squamous part of the temporal bone okay now we have posterior medial margin which articulates with petrous temporal bone can you see the petrous part this is the petrous part of the temporal bone this is the petrous part see how it is wedged between the sphenoid bone or greater wing of sphenoid and the occipital bone this part is wedged which part petrous part and you can clearly appreciate the petra this margin articulates with the petrous part of the temporal bone now only one margin is left postero med the entero medial margin entero medial margin is continuous with the pterygoid process and body of sphenoid you can appreciate it here this is the entero medial margin and it is continuous with the pterygoid process can you see the pterygoid process and body of sphenoid here this is the body of sphenoid here this part okay now let's talk about the posterior medial margin there are some of the foramen which is attached to posterior medial margin along the posterior medial margin the surface is pure surface of which bone the surface of greater wing of sphenoid has been pierced by some of the foramen by following foramen first is a foramen ovale okay which you can appreciate here foramen oval let me show you foramen oval can you see the foramen oval here the oval in shape it is oval in shape then posterior to foramen oval we have foramen spinosum why it is known as foramen spinosum because it is present in the spinous part spine of which bone of the greater wing of sphenoid okay that is the reason this foramen is known as foramen spinosum you can clearly see that okay now the third foramen which is not present here and it can be present uh, can may not be uh, may not be present okay the canaliculus innominatus it is actually present between foramen oval and foramen spinous it's not present here but let me mark it here between foramen oval and foramen spinous some like this can you see the black dot which is which has been marked by me between foramen oval and foramen spinous yes this is canaliculus innominatus okay let me show you here also yes this is canaliculus innominatus and we have one more foramen which is not present here known as foramen of vesalius it is also not always present but it can be present where is foramen vesalius it is present between foramen oval and scaphoid fossa let me show you it is also known as emissary sphenoidal foramen which is present between foramen oval and scaphoid fossa okay it is not present in this animated uh, diagram of the skull but yes if you have skull in your anatomy lab you can see these structures there it can be present there okay just try to appreciate these structures now there are some more structures which is related to posterior medial margin there is a sulcus let me show you first i take the screenshot of this structure and then we can study further now can you see the posterior medial margin there is a groove which is present between the posterior medial margin of the greater wing of sphenoid and petrous bone 
and this groove is known as sulcus tube the groove between the posterior medial margin of the sphenoid and the petrous temporal bone is known as which bone which part that is known as sulcus tube can you appreciate that part sulcus tube yes and what is present in that sulcus tube cartilage part of auditory tube this is the sulcus tube can you see appreciate this this is the posterior medial margin okay and this is the petrous bone can you see this petrous bone yes so here the sulcus is present i am not telling you the this part this part not this part this part like this this sulcus is going like this okay this part is foramen lacerum and before the foramen lacerum there is a sulcus which is present like this here here that is known as sulcus tube what does that lodge see that what it is lodging this is the cartilaginous part of auditory tube can you see the cartilage part of the auditory tube which is marked in green that is present there okay sulcus tube lodges cartilaginous part of auditory tube fine so here we discussed almost all the part which is related to norma basalis or inferior part of the skull of sphenoid bone that is both the part the pterygoid part also as well as greater wing part also which we can see from the norma basalis view yes we will study about the sphenoid bone in detail in the another lecture but yes here what the whichever structure whichever parts is necessary from norma basalis point of view has been discussed now for this sphenoid bone now we will study the temporal bone let me mark the temporal bone yes this is the temporal bone let me show you can you appreciate the green part here this is the temporal bone we are not going for mastoid part this is the mastoid process we are not going for this part because it comes under the posterior part of the norma basalis we are only studying the medial part of the middle part of the norma basalis and in middle also we are studying the lateral area because we have studied the medial area now we are studying the lateral area let me mark different structures which is present or which is related to temporal bone this is the temporal bone and here we have different structures this is the temporal bone and here we can see the norma basalis view of temporal bone let me show you different structure this is the petrous part can you appreciate the petrous part which is wedged between which bone the sphenoid bone and that side we have the occipital bone this is the petrous part and the inferior view of the petrous part we will see the post the superior view also of the petrous part but here in norma basalis we, we can only see the inferior view of the petrous part can you see the petrous part of the temporal bone which has been marked in red and it is the external view or inferior view lies between greater wing of sphenoid and base occipute am i clear just take the screenshot of this part then we can move further now we have some more structures this is the tympanic plate can you appreciate the green structure which is known as tympanic plate this is the tympanic plate okay we will study about each and every structures in detail now this part this whole part which you can see here this part other than tympanic mastoid and petrous this whole part is known as squamous part of the temporal bone the flat part of the temporal bone okay so here we have each and every structures of the temporal bone which we are going to study in this view norma basalis first we will study about the petrous part of the temporal bone let me show you the petrous part of the temporal bone now yes this is the petrous part of the uh, the temporal bone and this is the inner view 
This is the inner and the superior view, which we cannot see in Norma Basalis. But in order to get a proper idea of this view, I have just separated the temporal bone and I'm showing each and every part. See here, this is the apex of the triangular petrous part of temporal bone, apex part. Okay. Here you can appreciate the carotid canal, upper carotid canal, the red, the structure in red, upper carotid canal. And here you have lower carotid canal, actually carotid artery enters from here and comes out from here, the apex part of the triangular part of petrous part of temporal bone. And this is the inferior surface of petrous part of temporal bone, which we can see in the norma basalis. Fine. These are the structures. Now, can you appreciate the canal, carotid canal, which is marked in dotted line? Yes, why I have marked in dotted line? Because it is not seen externally. It is present from inside. Okay. Yes, this is the carotid canal which runs from forward and medially within the petrous temporal bone. Am I clear? So, here we discussed each and every part of the petrous part of the temporal bone which is imported from Norma, uh, Norma Basalis point of view. Now, let me show you. Can you see here? This is the apex. This structure is known here. You can see the apex of the temporal bone. And can you see the external acoustic meatus? This is the external acoustic meatus. Although this is not from normal, uh, important from normal uh, basalis point of view. But yes, you can appreciate this is the external acoustic meatus. And can you see internal acoustic meatus? Yes, this is the internal acoustic meatus. Okay. So this was just the introduction part of this structure, fine. So here we completed the petrous part of temporal bone. Another important structure is foramen lacerum. This foramen lacerum is present at the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone. Can you appreciate here? Yes. Can you see here? I have made three margins. The anterior margin, the medial margin and the posterior lateral margin. Can you see the posterior and the lateral margin? So, these are the margins of foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum is formed by anteriorly, by which bone? Anteriorly is formed by the root of the pterygoid process. Can you see the root of the pterygoid process? This forms the anterior margin of the foramen lacerum and a greater wing of sphenoid okay this anterior margin and then we have the second number the medial margin medial margin is formed by basi occiput and the body of sphenoid what is basi occiput basi occiput is the part of sphenoid bone oh sorry the occipital bone and the body of sphenoid both the bone forms the medial margin of the foramen lis then we have posterior margin, posterior and lateral. So, the posterior laterally by the apex of petrous temporal bone, the foramen lacerum or the posterior lateral margin of foramen lacerum is formed by the apex of petrous temporal bone. So, what are the three bones which is forming the foramen lacerum? The three bones are sphenoid bone, the occipital bone, basi occiput part and the petrous part of the temporal bone. Fine. This was the structure about the foramen lacerum. Am I clear? You can take the screenshot of this also foramen lacerum also. Fine. You can appreciate each and everything clearly. Fine. Now, inner part of petrous temporal bone is called tegment tympani. Yes, this name has been used in many books, including the BD Chorasia and all. We will see where this tegment tympani is present. You will see here. Can you see the bone part? Here, the bone has been cut. The temporal bone has been 
cut like this and you can appreciate this part this is known as tegment tympani this part is known as tegment tympani this has been here the temporal bone has been cut am i clear and this is the petrous part of temporal bone which has been cut here you can appreciate clearly the tegment tympani this is the tegment tympani can you see this tegment tympani this is present in middle cranial fossa middle cranial fossa is superior part it is not seen from the inferior view inferior view is from here but this tegment tympani is present from the which view superior view and it has nothing to do with the inferior view or norma basal it is not seen in norma basalis but still in some book it has been marked so i have explained you this also you may not confuse that what is tegment tympani this this part this small thin part of the bone is known as tegment tympani which is part of the petrous part of temporal bone can you see now see here also this is the tegment tympani okay now tympanic part of the temporal bone i will show you the tympanic part of the temporal bone we have studied the petrous part now we will study the tympanic part can you appreciate this white part here tympanic part this is the tympanic bone let me mark it more clearly this is the tympanic part of the temporal bone tympanic plate this is also known as tympanic plate can you see it is triangular in shape yes it is triangular curved plate it is looking like this curved plate triangular base is towards this side apex is towards this side it is curved like this okay now it is present this is my way of writing present plus and anti present between petrous and squamous part where is the petrous part here this is the petrous part can you see this is the petrous part and this part is the squamous part this is the squamous part of the temporal bone and this tympanic plate is present between both this part it is present between both this part the petrous part and the squamous part of the temporal bone and what the apex is directed medially can you see the apex which is marked in green it is directed medially towards the midpoint or midline not midpoint midline okay and lies close to spine of sphenoid where is the spine of sphenoid here we have the spine of sphenoid and it is located close to spine of sphenoid and can you see the base which is free curved and rough the base of the tympanic plate you can clearly appreciate the apex and the base of the tympanic plate now anterior surface forms the this the structure this forms the anterior this is the anterior surface of the tympanic plate and what is which structure is formed by the anterior surface of the tympanic plate the posterior wall can you see the posterior wall here this is the posterior wall of which structure mandibular fossa where the condyle will go what is condyle condyle is the part of mandible which is attached to the skull can you see the mandibular fossa this is the mandibular fossa and the posterior wall of mandibular fossa is formed by the anterior surface if you take out this bone if you take out this bone this is the anterior surface and this is the posterior surface and this anterior surface forms the posterior wall can you see the posterior wall yes this is the posterior wall of which part mandibular fossa while the posterior surface towards inside you can appreciate the posterior surface through external acoustic meatus so the posterior surface forms the of which part posterior surface of tympanic plate forms the anterior wall floor and lower part of external acoustic meatus here is the external acoustic meatus so external acoustic meatus 
द इंटीरियर वॉल फ्लोर एंड लोअर पार्ट इज फॉर्म बाय विच पार्ट ऑफ विच सर्फेस ऑफ द टिम्पेनिक प्लेट द पोस्टीरियर सर्फेस ऑफ द टिम्पेनिक प्लेट आई थिंक एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर टिल हियर रिगार्डिंग द टिम्पेनिक प्लेट ओके कैन यू एप्रिशिएट ईच एंड एवरी पार्ट दिस इज द स्क्वास पार्ट This is the squamous part of the temporal bone. Let me show you. This is the squamous, and squamous part form the mandibular fossa, mandibular articular fossa. Okay. So if anyone asks you, mandibular fossa is formed by which bone? Temporal bone. And which part of the temporal bone? Squamous part of the temporal bone. But posteriorly, this mandibular fossa. Posteriorly, it is formed by the tympanic plate, posterior wall, and this is the articular eminence or articular tubercle. Fine. When you open your mouth, the condyle of mandible slips over it. Okay, and it is known as articular tubercle or eminence. Am I clear? Now, small posterior lateral part. of the roof of infratemporal fossa is formed by squamous part of temporal bone yes a small posterior lateral part of roof of infratemporal fossa see temporal fossa is present above and the fossa which is present below it this part here this part is known as infratemporal fossa and small posterior lateral part of the roof of infratemporal fossa is formed by which bone the squamous part of the temporal bone okay so here we complete all the bony landmarks of middle part of the norma basalis thank you so much we'll study all the different parts the attachment the foramen and the structure passing through these foramen in another video so thank you so much for being the part of the lecture thank you